Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we talk about moving average again, this time about Ethereum. And we want to find out is it possible to outperform the crypto market by trading according to the moving average? And if so, what's the best moving average to take? So the way to answer this question is basically we're going to do some backtesting. We look at historical data. Um, we simulate buying and selling. And then we will compare those different strategies to just buying and holding and, and see where we get it. So um, let's go one step back. First, um, give you a little bit of an explainer what actually moving averages are, how they are calculated, how you can get one. So over here you see a chart of Ethereum. Um, I'm using tradingview.com to plot this chart. So just go to tradingview.com, open up Ethereum, check the advanced chart, then you will see this. And uh, what you can see in white is the price of Ethereum and in blue you see a moving average. So in this specific case it is the 21 day moving average. So the way a moving average is calculated is fairly simple. So at any given point in time you look in this case now 21 days back and you calculate the average of those 21 days. You sum up all the prices, you divide them by 21 and when you do this then you will get a price on this, uh, you, will get, you will get one point on this uh, blue line. Okay, so you do this all the time and the idea of the moving average is basically you, will, you try to find a trend in the market and, uh, and, and you try to filter out the noise, right? So prices, they fluctuate up and down and it's, it's pretty hard to spot a proper trend and with those moving average, you basically try to figure out are we in a bull market, are we in a bear market? And um, that's what moving averages do. So one strategy, one pretty basic strategy based on this technical uh, indicator is to buy whenever the price is above the moving average and to sell whenever the price is below the moving average. So let's look at this example here. Um, on the 3rd of January 2000, we would have bought into Ethereum at a price of $134 and then we would have just kept the position. We would have uh, ridden this wave all the way up and then the day we would have sold is on uh, the 25th of February okay, for $245 and we would just be completely in cash. right? We would afterwards not touch Ethereum anymore and you can see basically in this particular example this would have saved us quite a lot of money right we would have uh, not taken any of the downward price action and we would have re-entered the market again at a price here on the 31st of march of around 132 dollars so the way the strategy works is it only looks at the price when when the day closes right so uh, you could, in theory, buy and sell when the price fluctuates around the moving average within the day, but this would incur quite a lot of cost, right? Buying and selling cryptocurrency, uh, you do have the, the spread between the bid and the ask, so you, you buy for a more expensive price than, than you sell when you do this instantaneously, um, and you also have other fees, so you actually want to minimize the, the number of trades you do, and so thus, in this very simplistic strategy, we just look at the price at the end of the day and then we decide are we going to stay in our Ethereum position or are we going completely in cash. Okay, so that's the basics, that's the strategy. We would always be in the market whenever the price is above a moving average and we would be out of the market completely when it's below the moving average. So. Now the question is, there's more than one moving average, right? So this example was now a 21 day moving average. We could in theory say, let's not take the average of the last 21 days, but we could say, let's take the average of the last 14 days. So how does that look like? Now, now the line is way closer to the price. So you get more buy and sell orders or more buy and sell signals and uh, you would enter a market quicker, but you would also exit a market quicker. So what does this mean? It means that potentially we might get a few 
uh, wrong signals. So let's look at an example of such a wrong signal. Let's uh, zoom in here. Uh, we would have, for example, um, gone completely out of our position on the 25th of January 2000. And then the price increases to the next day at 26th of January, we would be buying in again, right? But we didn't get any of these gains from the 25th to the 26th. Um, so that's not good. Uh, same the other way around, right? We would uh, be in the market. So, so for example, here, this is a very nice example. We would have bought on the 23rd of March for $136. And we expect now an uptrend, but what happens? There's too much fluctuation. The moving average is too close to the to the price and so we would have then sold on the 29th of march for a lower price of 124 and then we would kind of panic buy in again the next day for 132. so there seems to be an optimal period um, what kind of moving average to take right so you want to get as little wrong signals as possible, but you still want to get the uh, the best up and, and, and down trends, right? You, you don't want to be in the market when, when the price goes down. And so now what I've done is basically looked at all of the price data of Ethereum and uh, tried to figure out what's actually the best moving average. And I made this analysis for quite a few moving averages um, up to the 360 day moving average. So just to give you a little bit of uh, a look at this. So this is the 360 day. It's not close to the price at all. It's, it's very smooth. Um, you do avoid quite a downtrend over here, but you also enter the market relatively late. So there has been quite a bull run from $83 to $240. Uh, which you, you wouldn't have taken because your your moving average is so slow. It's, it's it, the, the buy, buying signals are very slow to react to positive price movements. And so let's look at the results of that analysis. Okay, so first thing to note is the chart starts actually uh, more or less with a bear market, right? We all know that Ethereum had a quite nice bull run after the first tokens had been issued. This is not reflective here on the chart. The chart starts later than that. Uh, it starts basically with the first bear market and that's because um, our simulated trading starts one year after, after Ethereum has ever uh, has launched. And so the reason for that is basically we can't calculate any moving average before that because we need to get the average price of 360 days. And so in order to also compare all the moving averages uh, against each other, even for the moving average where we can get um, price signals or buying and selling signals earlier than that, we're still gonna start one year afterwards. So at least we have the same period um, where we buy and sell and we can directly compare the performance of the different moving average strategies. So here you can see in white the Ethereum price and in gray the uh, performance of that strategy. And you can see very nicely here when uh, the price falls below this uh, pink moving average that we go completely in cash. So our, our strategy line, our bankroll line is completely flat and we re-enter the market again when the price gets above the moving average. And what we can see here as well, this is now quite interesting, the performance of that strategy is very similar to buying and holding. So if you would have just bought and hold for that period, we would have gained the same compared to, you know, buying and selling according to this moving average. What you can see though is that this uh, strategy is a bit more conservative as to just buying and holding because all the losses we make in a bear market, they are basically uh, limited. We, we exit the market a bit earlier. So this whole bear market that we had here uh, in Ethereum at the beginning, we basically just took half of it. Uh, we also then just got half of the bull run afterwards, but we get the same performance for less volatility, for less, less risk, and that's already, that's already a gain. 
that's already a positive. So let's look now at other moving average. So the 270 day moving average, it reacts a bit faster. So you can see that the uh, purple line moves a bit closer to the price. And uh, we can see here we outperform buying and holding for quite a bit. Let's go even faster, the 180 day. Um, again, very similar to just buying and holding, no big outperformance, 90 day same story 60 day also very similar story um, and now we get to something interesting so the 30 day seems to be already quite good so it outperforms quite consistently we are in and out of the market relatively uh, often maybe we are in the market only half of the time but we outperform quite substantially uh, this is the 14 day this is the seven day so, so let's look at this all aggregated. What's actually now the, the annual return that we can expect from trading according to the moving average. Uh, interestingly enough, buying and holding is one of the worst performers. Trading according to the moving average seems as per tendency to outperform. And we can see for the 30 day moving average, we get like a really, really good performance. So, so what I then did is um, I, I basically zoomed in, wanted to find out what's actually now the best moving average if you look at all the results between say 14 days to 60 days. And so I did exactly that. And here you can see basically a very similar chart to the one before, it's drawn a little bit differently. But on the x-axis, you can see the duration of the moving average. So all the way from a two-day moving average to a 360-day moving average. That's the x-axis. And the y-axis is the annual performance. So the best performer lies somewhere between 0 and 50 days and uh, returns around 170% uh, per annum. And uh, yeah, that's basically the, the, the result. And now let's look, ah, then one more thing that's very interesting is when you look at the two day moving average, uh, you actually get even negative returns. So what does it mean like two day moving average? Uh, it basically means we would just compare our closing price of today with the closing price yesterday. And Whenever the price is below yesterday's price, we, we would be selling. And when it's above yesterday's closing price, we would be buying. So we would be buying and selling all the time. This simulation did not account for any transaction costs. So it's purely just figuring out how good is this, this uh, signal. But what this actually tells us, this negative performance here at a two day moving average is that when Ethereum rose in price yesterday. On average, uh, we can see that the price today will fall. So there's an inverse relationship, an inverse correlation, so to say, from yesterday's performance to, do, to today's performance. So we should kind of, when, when we trade Ethereum on a very short time frame, we might consider, okay, we only buy Ethereum actually when it dropped yesterday because then we might on tendency uh, on average expect that it rises uh, today. So that's very interesting because Ethereum was, was in general when you just buy and hold was uh, returning what was it around uh, 50 something percent per annum even when you include all the bear market right bear market the bull market uh, around 60 percent per annum. But if you just if you just invested more or less half of the time, and if you just invest based on yesterday's performance, you would actually even get negative returns. So this is a relatively strong indication, actually. So, so if yesterday was a good day, don't take today as a buying opportunity when you're looking at very short time frames. So here are the results now, uh, just again in table form. And what we can see here are two very interesting uh, 
moving average scale. So the 23 day was the outperformer over here, right? 23 day, it returns 166% uh, per annum. The maximum drawdown from the top of that strategy to the bottom is 47%, uh, which is way better than buying and holding Ethereum, right? Buying and holding Ethereum had a top to bottom maximum drawdown of 90%, right? That means you put in $100 and when you got the worst timing, you might see only $10 in your account at the lowest level. That's pretty scary. But with that strategy, you quote unquote only lose 50% if, if your timing is really bad. And the very same maximum drawdown we get for the 39 day moving average. Um, and we get around 144%. So those seem to be, depending on your trading style, the best moving average to trade by when you use, uh, when you trade Ethereum, it's a 23 and the 39 day. Um, so 39 day should be probably this, this uh, moving average over here. Um, so here again, the, the charts actually, so this is now how the best performing uh, moving average for Ethereum looks like, the 23 day. Um, quite clear outperformance, a lot of the bear market has been mitigated and this is the 39. If you don't like trading that much, if your transaction fees are pretty high, uh, that's the performance of the 39 day average. So when we just look at this now from in the live chart, let's just put those moving averages in. So we have a 39 and let's also add the 23. Let's make this a big, uh, bit, bit better to see. Okay, and let's move in. So uh, right now we would basically be invested and, uh, and yeah, we can see also just on this chart, right? If we just look at uh, say the slower of the two moving averages, the 39 day, um, right, you can see it, it the signals are really, really nice. So you would basically buy here at $370. You take the whole bull market. Uh, you would have sold then around $1,500. Um, be a little bit in cash, but now we're back in, in the game again. So, so just take those two averages um, for your general strategy. Whenever you consider buying and selling Ethereum, uh, those are at least historically speaking, uh, the best performers. And um, yeah, that concludes uh, this video, that concludes uh, the analysis. So if you like this content, if you wanna get more of this kind of content, please like the video, consider subscribing, and um, please also put a comment below as in what I can do better, right? I'm just starting off this channel. This is my second video I've ever published here. So let me know how I can improve and um, Hopefully see you next time. Bye.